we're starting a chapter on polynomials. And the word polynomials actually means many, poly means many, many terms. And so if we look at the different kinds of polynomials, the first one we're going to talk about is a monomial. Um, a monomial meaning one term. And a monomial looks something like 2x squared. It's a monomial. Or you might have 2xyz is a monomial. Or 3x is a monomial. So these are all examples of monomials. You can multiply things together, you can raise something to a power, and it is considered a monomial. A binomial is made up of two terms, and each of the terms is a monomial. For example, 2x squared plus 3x would be considered a binomial. And one way you can really recognize these is binomials are separated by plus or minus signs. So you might have something like 3xy minus 2y, and that would be considered a binomial because it has two terms. The next one we would have is a trinomial, and a trinomial has three terms. So um, common trinomials you might see are, um, I kind of seem to be stuck with two there, 2x squared minus 3x plus is considered a trinomial. It has three terms. 2x squared is a term, 3x is a term, and 5 is a term. So those are just a few. Um, those are the ones that have special names um, for different types of poly polynomials. Now, we, before we really get into the new material, we need to review the exponent rules that you would have learned about in Algebra 1, but maybe it's been a while since you've used them. So remember that something like x to the fifth power means x times x times x times x times x. So raising it to an exponent tells you how many times that factor repeats. Well, what about if you have something like x squared times x to the fourth? Well, if you think about what it means, we have x times x times x times x times x times x. Well, when you're multiplying, I really wouldn't need the parentheses. So I really have six factors of x. So I get x to the sixth power. And you might recall a rule that says when multiplying, with common bases, add the exponents. So instead of writing it all out, we can just say 2 plus 4 is 6. So for example, if you had 2m to the 4th times 3m to the 5th, now the 2 and the 3, those are just regular numbers. So 2 times 3 is 6. But then now I have m to the 4th and m to the 5th. I'm multiplying and I have a common base, so I add the exponents. So my answer is 6m to the 9th. Or one more, if I have 2x squared y cubed times negative 4 x y to the 6th, I'm just going to multiply the two integer values, so I get negative 8 x squared, remember this is like having x to the first. So I have, I add the exponents and I get x cubed. And then for the y's, I have y cubed times y to the sixth. I have a common base. So I can say that's y to the ninth. All right, what about m to the sixth power divided by m squared? Well, let's start by thinking about what that means. m times m times m, times m, times m, times m. So I have six factors of m over m times m. Well, 
I can do a little bit of canceling because M goes into M one time, so I can cancel those. Those reduce to one. These reduce to one. So what do I have left? Well, I have M to the fourth in the numerator, and I just have one in the denominator, so I get M to the fourth. And the rule that we have for this particular problem, when dividing with common basis, subtract the exponents. So for example, if we have 12x to the fifth over 8x squared. Well, I can do a little bit of reducing of fractions. I know 4 goes into 12 three times, and 4 goes into 12 two times. So I'm going to have three halves. And then I can take x to the fifth divided by x squared. I'm going to I'm going to subtract the exponents, and I get x five minus two is three. So I can write it like this, or I could say three x cubed over two. Um, either one, those would be equivalent. All right. Here's another example. Suppose we have eighteen x squared y to the fifth over 4xy squared. So again, I can do a little bit of simplifying with my fractions. Uh, 2 goes into 18 nine times, and 2 goes into um, 4 twice. So I get 9 halves. I'm going to subtract. Remember, it's like there's a 1 there. So 2 minus 1 is 1, so I get x to the first. And when I subtract the exponents here, I get y cubed. So that's how you can use the rule when you're dividing with common bases. So here's another example. If we have x squared over x to the fifth. Well, if we use the exponent rule, we just said we're dividing, so we subtract the exponents. So I get x to the negative 3, because I'm going to subtract 2 minus 5. Now, what does it mean to have a negative exponent? All right, well, let's think about this. We also know that x squared over x to the fifth, I could write this out as x times x, and my denominator is x times x times x times x times x. I can do a little bit of canceling. So those reduce to 1, these reduce to 1. So what I have left, I have 1 in the numerator, and I have x to the third power in the denominator. So what that means is x to the negative third power equals 1 over x cubed, because I just showed two different approaches with the same problem. So what that tells me is a negative exponent indicates reciprocal. So for example, if you have 2 to the negative third power, we can flip that over and say that's the same as 1 over 2 to the third power. And 2 to the third power, 2 times 2 times 2, is 8. Or another example, if I take a fraction, 3 halves, to the negative 2 power, well, a negative exponent tells me reciprocal, so do the reciprocal. And now this would be to a positive 2. So I end up with 2 squared is 4, and 3 to the second power is 9. All right, what about a problem like m squared raised to the third power? Well, if you think about what that means, that's m squared times m squared times
times m squared. And we already know that when we multiply, we add the exponents. 2 plus 2 plus 2 is, th is 6, so I get m to the 6th power. So this brings us to another rule. When you have the situation where you have a power of a power, you multiply the exponents. So for example, if you have x to the fifth raised to the eighth power, you end up with x to the fortieth. If you have x squared raised to the negative third power, power to a power you multiply, so we get x to the negative six. But remember that's a negative exponent, so I'm going to flip this over and say this is the same as one over x to the sixth. All right, just a couple more here. Another example, what if we have m squared times n cubed and we raise that to the third power? Well, that's like having m squared n cubed times m squared n cubed times m squared n cubed. So now I can use my rules. Bases are the same, so add the exponents. So I have m to the 6th times n to the ninth. Well, if you look over here, we have, can develop this rule, or we had a rule from Algebra 1, um, which really you're just multiplying. We're combining those two steps. So it's power to a power. So we're just multiplying those exponents. And you can see how we get those answers. So as another example, if you have x y cubed quantity squared. Remember there's a 1 here. So we end up multiplying 2 times 1 is 2 so we get x squared 2 times 3 is 6 so we get y to the 6. One more example like this. If we have 2x squared raised to the third power again remember it's like having 2 to the first here so I multiply the exponents and I get 2 to the third times x to the sixth. And then I would simplify 2 to the third. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So I get 8x to the sixth. And similarly, if you have a quotient instead of a product, and you have this raised to the third, it's the same idea here. We're going to multiply the 3 times the 2. We're going to multiply the 3 times the 3. So we're going to, um, actually I in intended this to be an n, so let me change that. So we end up with m to the 6th power divided by n to the ninth power. That was a really quick review on exponent rules. Um, we will be using these tomorrow in class to um, add some new material to that as we explore polynomials.